Maybe no one told you this, but Amanda Blake died of AIDS, not nasopharyngeal cancer. Right at the moment Amanda's doctor made this heartbreaking revelation, many of her fans couldn't stand it. Not stopping there, a special person appeared at Amanda's funeral and confessed things that no one expected. He was not invited, but for some reason, he was forced to appear and say his last words to the deceased. Turn your attention to Amanda's funeral now to find out this shocker. Before talking about the mysterious figure at Amanda's funeral, let's find out the cause of her death first. In 1977, when Blake was a prominent figure, she was a heavy cigarette smoker and found herself confronting a dire diagnosis, oral cancer. Despite the daunting challenge ahead, she bravely underwent surgery and emerged victorious, triumphing over the disease. This pivotal moment in her life marked the beginning of her journey as a passionate advocate for cancer awareness and research. Driven by her personal experience, Blake became deeply involved with the American Cancer Society, channeling her energy into supporting their cause. Her dedication knew no bounds as she embarked on a series of fundraising appearances crisscrossing the nation to spread awareness and garner support for the fight against cancer. Blakey's unwavering commitment and tireless efforts did not go unnoticed. In 1984, she was bestowed with the prestigious Corrig Award by the American Cancer Society, a testament to her resilience and determination. The honor reached its pinnacle when she received the award from none other than the President, of the United States at the time, Ronald Reagan, underscoring the significance of her contributions. Tragically, despite overcoming one formidable health challenge, Blake faced another unforeseen adversary. On August 16, 1989, she succumbed to complications from AIDS-related pneumonia at Mercy General Hospital in Sacramento, California. Initially believed to be a consequence of her previous battle with throat cancer, her passing shed light on a hidden truth. In a startling revelation, Blake's doctor publicly disclosed that her demise was indeed attributed to complications arising from AIDS. This revelation stunned many, prompting questions about the source of her contraction of the disease. Despite the speculation, the exact origins of her infection remained shrouded in mystery. Close friends of Blake vehemently refuted any insinuation of drug use or promiscuity. Instead, pointing to a possibility that she contracted AIDS from her fifth husband, who tragically also fell victim to AIDS-related pneumonia in 1985. In Sacramento, California, where Blake spent her final days, plans were underway for a poignant gathering to honor her memory. The Sacramento Garden Chapel was chosen as the venue for the memorial services, providing a serene setting for friends, family, and fans to come together and pay their respects. The memorial services, scheduled for Thursday, promised to be a fitting tribute to Blake's enduring legacy. Despite her fame, Blake's services were to be non-religious, reflecting her inclusive spirit and universal appeal. It was an occasion to celebrate her life, her contributions to the entertainment industry, and the indelible mark she left on the hearts of many. However, Blake's connection to nature extended beyond the confines of Hollywood sound stages. Her passion for wildlife and conservation was well known, a facet of her character that endeared her to audiences worldwide. In a poignant gesture that echoed her love for the natural world, Blake's ashes were destined for a unique final resting place. ABC News wildlife correspondent Roger Caras, a trusted voice in conservation efforts, undertook the responsibility of transporting Blake's ashes to a game preserve in Kenya. It was a symbolic journey, carrying Blake's spirit across continents to a sanctuary where she could forever be surrounded by the beauty of the African wilderness she cherished. The origin of Amanda's relationship with wildlife comes from the time she gave up Hollywood. Following her illustrious tenure on Gunsmoke, Amanda Blake transitioned into a semi-retired phase of her life, finding solace and purpose in her home nestled within the vibrant landscape of Phoenix, Arizona. In this tranquil setting, she embarked on a new chapter, one defined by her unwavering dedication to the animal kingdom. 
At the heart of Blake's post-gunsmoke life lay a profound love for animals, a passion that manifested in various endeavors. Central to her daily existence was the companionship of her beloved pet lion, Kimo, a majestic presence that had become a familiar sight on the Gunsmoke's set, symbolizing Blake's deep connection to the natural world. But Blake's commitment to wildlife extended far beyond mere companionship. Alongside her husband, Frank Gilbert, she established an animal compound at their Phoenix residence, where they spearheaded an ambitious breeding program for cheetahs. Their pioneering efforts bore fruit, marking them as trailblazers in the successful captive breeding of cheetahs, nurturing seven generations of these magnificent creatures. Yet Blake's devotion to animals transcended her personal endeavors. In 1971, she lent her support to the formation of the Arizona Animal Welfare League, a groundbreaking initiative that evolved into the state's oldest and largest no-kill animal shelter, embodying Blake's unwavering commitment to animal welfare and advocacy. In 1985, Blake's philanthropic spirit soared to new heights as she played a pivotal role in the establishment of the Performing Animal Welfare Society, PWS. Investing not only her resources but also her time and energy, she championed PWS's mission to provide sanctuary and protection to captive wildlife, embarking on journeys to Africa to further the cause she held dear. Blake's compassion knew no bounds, as evidenced by her involvement as a board member of the Humane Society of the United States, where she lent her voice to the collective effort to safeguard the rights and well-being of animals on a national scale. In 1997, Blake's legacy of compassion and conservation found a tangible expression with the inauguration of the Amanda Blake Memorial Wildlife Refuge at Rancho Seco Park in Herald, California. This sanctuary stood as a testament to her enduring legacy, offering a haven for free-ranging African hoofed wildlife, rescued from the brink of exploitation and destined for a life of tranquility and dignity. Now, let's see what's in Amanda's funeral. As the somber atmosphere enveloped the room, Mourners clad in black attire gathered solemnly around the casket, their grief palpable in the air. The scent of fresh flowers mingled with the strains of soft music, creating a melancholic backdrop for the proceedings. At the front of the room, the priest stood poised at the pulpit, preparing to deliver a eulogy that would honor the life and legacy of Amanda Blake. As the priest began to speak, the camera panned across the assembled crowd, capturing the expressions of sorrow etched upon their faces. Tears flowed freely, and grief hung heavy in the air as each individual grappled with the reality of Blake's passing. Among the mourners, one figure stood out amidst the sea of mournful faces. James, a man in his mid-thirties, his appearance disheveled, his demeanor tense and uncertain. As James navigated the crowd, his gaze fixated on the casket, memories of his time with Blake flooding his mind. I can't believe you're gone, Amanda, he whispered, his voice barely audible above the hushed whispers of the congregation. With hesitant steps, James approached the pulpit, clutching a faded photograph in his trembling hands. Unfolding the picture, James revealed a snapshot frozen in time, a moment of joy shared between him and Amanda, captured in happier days. As he addressed the congregation, his voice quivered with emotion, his words a heartfelt tribute to the woman he had loved and lost. I'm not supposed to be here. I wasn't invited, but I couldn't let you go without saying goodbye, he confessed, his voice thick with sorrow. The congregation turned to look at James, their expressions a mix of surprise, curiosity, and compassion. Some exchanged puzzled glances, while others nodded in silent understanding, touched by the raw emotion in James's words. In that poignant moment, amidst the grief and sadness that enveloped them, James's presence served as a poignant reminder of the profound impact Amanda Blake had on the lives of those who knew and loved her. People often wonder why Amanda died alone when she had a complete family. In fact, she has gone through many unhappy marriages, 
which makes her want to enjoy a single life rather than commitment. In 1954, she exchanged vows with Don Whitman, embarking on a matrimonial path that proved fleeting as the union ended in divorce just two years later in 1956. Yet amid the tumult of her personal life, Blake found solace and familiarity on the set of Gunsmoke, where the camaraderie and sense of belonging offered respite on the days when she was not called upon to portray her iconic character. It was within the confines of the saloon set, amidst the dusty streets of Dodge City, that Blake discovered a sanctuary of sorts, a place where she could retreat and find comfort amid the routines of filming. For Blake, the saloon set became more than just a backdrop for her performances. It became a refuge, a home away from home, where she could navigate the complexities of her personal life while immersing herself in the world of Gunsmoke. However, the ebb and flow of Blake's personal life continued, marked by both joy and sorrow. In 1984, she embarked on a new chapter of love and companionship, exchanging vows with Mark Edward Spaeth, a distinguished figure in Austin, Texas, serving as a city councilman. Their union promised hope and happiness, a beacon of light amid the challenges that life often presents. Tragically, the promise of their life together was cut short when Spaeth succumbed to AIDS-related pneumonia in 1985, leaving Blake to grapple with profound loss once again. Not only that, Amanda's later death shows that the source of the illness she suffered may have been due to her last husband. This harsh truth has squeezed the hearts of many Amanda fans. Amanda has a different perspective on marriage, did you know this? At the time of one article's publication, Amanda Blake's romantic history was a topic of intrigue, with the actress having already embarked on multiple marriages and poised to enter into three more unions in the future. However, amidst the complexities of her personal life, Blake offered a candid revelation about her perspective on marriage and its intersection with her career as an actress. Reflecting on her past relationships, Blake acknowledged that she had often sought solace in marriage, viewing it as an escape from the frustrations and challenges she encountered in her professional life. She candidly admitted, I think that I used marriage as an escape mechanism, an escape from frustration, born of the fact that I wasn't working as an actress. For Blake, marriage had served as a refuge from the uncertainties and disappointments of her career, providing a semblance of stability and comfort in times of turmoil. However, as she gained insight and wisdom with age, Blake came to a profound realization about the inherent conflict between marriage and her career aspirations. She recognized that her passion for acting and her relentless pursuit of success often took precedence over her commitments as a wife, leading to inevitable tensions and conflicts within her relationships. In a moment of clarity, Blake asserted, I know now that I cannot mix marriage with a career, because to me the career comes first, and that's not fair to any husband. With this newfound understanding, Blake made the difficult decision to prioritize her career above all else recognizing the toll that her professional ambitions could take on her personal life. She understood that the demands of an acting career required unwavering dedication and sacrifice, leaving little room for the compromises and compromises that marriage often entailed. As a result, Blake made the conscious choice to embrace solitude, declaring, So I live alone, acknowledging that a solitary existence afforded her the freedom and autonomy to pursue her dreams without constraint. Acknowledging her independence and self-reliance, Blake boldly declared, It may sound unfeminine, but I don't need a man to whisper sweet nothings into my ear. Her words echoed a sentiment of empowerment and autonomy, challenging traditional gender norms and asserting her right to define happiness on her own terms. For Blake, true fulfillment lay not in the flattery of men or the pursuit of romantic love, but in the genuine connections she forged with her admirers, particularly the young girls who looked up to her as a role model. She shared, When a little girl recognizes me on the street and asks for my autograph, even today after six years of being on the show, I get a bigger thrill out of that than when a man says, Darling, you look lovely. In this heartfelt revelation, 
Blake revealed the profound impact of her role as Miss Kitty on Gunsmoke and the meaningful connections she formed with her audience. Far from seeking validation from romantic relationships, Blake found fulfillment in the admiration and affection of her fans especially the young girls who saw in her a source of inspiration and empowerment. To remember Amanda, let's look back at the journey she has gone through. From an early age, Blake displayed a spirited and adventurous nature, traits that would define her as she navigated the twists and turns of life. Raised in the comfort of a loving family, she was the daughter of a banker, a man whose steady presence provided a foundation of stability amidst the unpredictability of the world. Yet, despite her privileged upbringing, Blake possessed a drive and ambition that transcended the confines of her surroundings. In her youth, she embarked on a pathless travelid, eschewing convention to pursue her dreams of stardom on the silver screen. Before making her mark in Hollywood, however, she embarked on a brief stint as a telephone operator a role that offered a glimpse into the fast-paced world beyond her hometown. But it was the allure of the stage and the promise of the spotlight that truly captured Blake's imagination. Fueled by a desire to bring characters to life and captivate audiences, she set her sights on a career in acting, a decision that would alter the course of her life forever. Though she briefly attended Pomona College, her true passion lay in the world of entertainment and she soon found herself immersed in the vibrant tapestry of the acting world. Yet, amidst the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, Blake remained grounded in her roots, drawing inspiration from her family's rich history. Among her ancestors was Catherine Moore, Kate Berry, a revered figure whose heroic deeds during the American Revolutionary War left an indelible mark on history. As a descendant of such a valiant ancestor, Blake carried with her a legacy of courage and resilience, traits that would serve her well as she navigated the challenges of her own life and career. In the late 1940s, Amanda Blake emerged as a rising star in Hollywood's constellation, capturing the attention of industry giants like Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, MGM. With her striking beauty and undeniable talent, she was hailed as the studio's next Greer Garson, poised to ascend to the heights of cinematic glory. Blake's journey to stardom began with her signing to MGM, a momentous occasion that signaled the start of her illustrious career in the spotlight. As she stepped onto the hallowed grounds of Hollywood's most prestigious studio, she carried with her a sense of determination and purpose, ready to make her mark on the silver screen. Her early forays into Tinseltown saw her cast in a series of notable roles, each one showcasing her versatility and magnetic presence. In 1952, she graced the screen in the western epic Cattletown, effortlessly embodying the spirit of the untamed frontier with her captivating performance. Yet it was in the starring role of Miss Robin Crusoe, a 1954 adaptation of the classic Robinson Crusoe adventure, that Blake truly shone. Bringing depth and nuance to the character, she captivated audiences with her portrayal of a resourceful and resilient heroine, navigating the challenges of survival on a deserted island with grace and determination. In that same year, Blake's star continued to rise with her appearance in the timeless classic, A Star is Born. In this acclaimed film, she shared the screen with Hollywood luminaries, leaving an indelible impression with her poise, charm, and undeniable talent. Her performance served as a testament to her status as a rising star on the Hollywood landscape, earning her accolades and acclaim from critics and audiences alike. Amanda Blake's iconic portrayal of the resilient and beloved saloon keeper, Miss Kitty, in the legendary television series Gunsmoke, catapulted her to enduring fame and secured her a place in the annals of television history. Spanning an impressive 19-year stint from 1955 to 1974, her portrayal of Miss Kitty captivated audiences week after week, earning her a legion of devoted fans and cementing her status as a television icon. As Miss Kitty, Blake brought a rare combination of strength, grace, and vulnerability to the character, 
imbuing her with depth and complexity that resonated with viewers of all ages. Her portrayal of the shrewd and independent saloon proprietor who held her own in the rough-and-tumble world of the Wild West was a testament to her talent and versatility as an actress. But it wasn't just Blake's impeccable acting chops that endeared her to audiences. It was also her undeniable chemistry with her co-stars, particularly James Arness, who portrayed the iconic Marshall Matt Dillon. Together, they formed a dynamic duo whose on-screen partnership became the heart and soul of Gunsmoke, captivating audiences with their banter, camaraderie, and unspoken affection. Yet, Blake's impact on the set of Gunsmoke extended far beyond her stellar performances. On February 27, 1974, she made headlines when she brought a real-life lion named Kimo onto the set, adding an unexpected twist to the already legendary series. Blake's love for animals was well known, and her decision to incorporate Kimo into the show further endeared her to fans and solidified her reputation as a passionate advocate for animal welfare. The presence of Kimo on the set of Gunsmoke not only added an element of excitement and unpredictability to the show, but also served as a reflection of Blake's own values and passions. Her commitment to animal rights and conservation was evident in every aspect of her life, and her decision to share her love for animals with her colleagues and fans only further endeared her to audiences around the world. Despite Amanda Blake's enduring role as Miss Kitty on Gunsmoke, which demanded much of her time and attention, she still managed to make memorable appearances on a variety of television shows, showcasing her versatility and comedic talent to audiences across the nation. One of Blake's notable television appearances was her recurring comedy routine on The Red Skelton Show, where she showcased her comedic chops alongside legendary comedian Red Skelton. Their chemistry and comedic timing made for unforgettable moments that left audiences in stitches and solidified Blake's reputation as a versatile performer capable of excelling in both drama and comedy. In addition to her role on The Red Skelton Show, Blake also made appearances as a celebrity guest on popular game shows of the era, including Hollywood Squares, Tattletales, and the 1970s revival of Match Game. Her quick wit and charismatic presence made her a fan favorite on these shows, earning her a place in the hearts of viewers who eagerly tuned in to see her compete and interact with fellow celebrities. Beyond game shows, Blake also showcased her comedic talents on the famed Dean Martin Celebrity Roast, where she joined a star-studded lineup of comedians and entertainers to lovingly roast and toast their fellow celebrities. Her sharp wit and infectious laughter added a touch of glamour and sophistication to the proceedings, earning her acclaim from both audiences and her peers in the entertainment industry. In 1957, Amanda Blake ventured beyond the familiar confines of Dodge City to guest star in an episode of the crime drama series State Trooper. In this memorable appearance titled Coat of Many Colors, Blake portrayed the character Betty LaVon Coat, showcasing her acting prowess and leaving a lasting impression on audiences with her compelling performance. Despite her enduring commitment to gun smoke, Blake's talents extended far beyond the boundaries of the Wild West. Her guest appearance on State Trooper served as a testament to her versatility as an actress, demonstrating her ability to inhabit diverse roles and bring depth to every character she portrayed. Years later, Following a reunion film for Gunsmoke, Blake made two feature film appearances that further showcased her range and talent. In 1988, she graced the silver screen in The Boost, a gripping drug addiction drama starring James Woods and Sean Young. In this poignant film, Blake delivered a nuanced and captivating performance, delving into the complexities of addiction and human relationships with her trademark grace and intensity. Additionally, Blake appeared in B.O.R.N., another feature film released in 1988. In this project, she once again demonstrated her versatility as an actress, immersing herself in a compelling narrative that captivated audiences and critics alike. Through her role in B.O.R.N., Blake reaffirmed her status as a versatile and accomplished actress, 
capable of commanding the screen with her talent and charisma. In 1968, Amanda Blake received one of the highest honors bestowed upon performers within the Western genre when she was inducted into the Hall of Great Western Performers at the prestigious National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City. This recognition was a testament to her significant contributions to the world of Western entertainment and solidified her place among the pantheon of legendary figures celebrated by the museum. Blake's induction into the Hall of Great Western Performers was a milestone moment in her illustrious career, marking her as one of the foremost talents in the genre. She joined an esteemed company of individuals whose impact on Western cinema and television had left an indelible mark on popular culture. To be recognized alongside luminaries such as Tom Mix and Gary Cooper, who were selected for induction in 1958 and 1966 respectively, was a tremendous honor for Blake. It underscored the depth of her talent and the enduring legacy of her portrayal of Miss Kitty on the iconic television series Gunsmoke. What do you think about Amanda Blake's death? and the sacrifices she made for her career. Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this, and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.